May the Lord bless each and every one of you. May the Lord descend many blessings upon you all today. May the Lord look at each one and may he have mercy. Hear your prayers. Hear your pleas. May the Lord see each one of your needs. And may the Lord be at your side, just as his word says, that the Lord is your shade at your right hand. This is what we hope for. This is what I want and desire, that my Lord may be at your side and that you may enjoy and receive from his hand all of the marvelous blessings of his promise. Today, let us continue worshiping the Lord with our reflections and looking in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, from verse 25 through 30. We're going to be reflecting upon precious verses where our Lord Jesus Christ, what he does is teach his doctrine, teach to the people, and as well, teaching us that we feel privileged of being able to be here gathered all together with one thought in the Lord, reflecting upon his word, learning his doctrine, as well receiving his blessings, and why not say how he manifests himself with the miracles he has for each one. So therefore, we feel very blessed because of our Lord and the Lord Jesus Christ teaching his word as always. He, they spoke to him. The scripture says that they brought the children to him and the apostles became upset because the parents would come with their children and would present them to the Lord for he to lay hands upon them. The apostles would move them and would say no, not to bring them. The Lord, when he realized this, he said no, to let them, let the children come to me. Because from the children is the kingdom of heaven. But when the Lord said that the children is the kingdom of heaven, he was not speaking of their age. He was speaking that there were men and women with the heart of a child, that in hearing the word of the Lord, they would convert and they would do the will of the Father. This is why the Lord always said that all had to be as children. So here in verse 25, the Lord Jesus Christ said, At that time Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent. These things refers to the pure doctrine of the gospel, the word of the Lord, the kingdom of heaven. These were these hidden things from the wise, it says, and prudent, those that were intelligent. The Lord, our father, hid these things from these persons and revealed them to the children and revealed them to babes, it says. Remember, I said, not of age, but children of a willing heart, as were the apostles when the Lord Jesus Christ called upon them. They left their work. They left their home, their families. They left everything to follow the Lord as children. They believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, and there they were at his side, enjoying the blessings and enjoying his word, the revelation, the marvelous doctrine. The Lord always compared, saying they all have to be as children, as his child. For this child is humble, this child believes, trust, in this child there is no wickedness. And this is what the Lord wanted for men and women to be with the heart of a child, without wickedness, without maliciousness, without wanting to harm another, without deceiving anyone, lying, without taking advantage, anything that was inappropriate. So the Lord, this is why he says to the father, 
you revealed to the, the babes, to the children. You revealed this marvelous doctrine to the children. 26. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. Nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. But here when it says, come, believe in me, those who are labor, tired, full of anguish, worries, sadness, pain, illnesses, humiliated, belittled. When the people speak against them, when they blasphemy, when they slander, all of these things become a heavy burden a hard task. People become tired. They have no peace. They have no joy in their heart. They don't know how to resolve their problems. So the Lord says, come to me, all those that have all these tribulations and problems, these burdens, and I will have them rest. Take my yoke upon you, it says, and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. So the Lord Jesus Christ is giving the invitation to take the yoke. A yoke, which is a burden. Something that is taken in the body. In the antiquity, the animals, the ox, they were placed a yoke upon them to move the dirt. And this yoke had to be balanced. Both animals had to carry the same yoke. They had to have the same height because it was extremely heavy. And if there was one ox that was smaller than the other, he would suffer more the weight of this yoke and he would not be able to carry the same task as the other. He says, take my yoke, the Lord Jesus Christ, since he was suffering because of us carrying as well the humiliation and the persecution due to him defending people, those persons who believed in him, those who would be saved. The Lord said it is a yoke and as well the, his suffering and all that he was waiting at the cross of Calvary. This was a heavy burden, a heavy yoke, strong that he knew he was carrying. So all he was teaching as he teaches us, take my yoke upon you. Learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Yes, it was easy, the yoke, and easy, the burden, because the Lord Jesus Christ is whom helps us carry our problems or difficulties. He is the only one that comforts us. He is the one that makes promises and blesses us, delivers us, heals us. He does many miracles and wonders in our life, giving us joy and happiness. He makes beautiful promises, spiritual things, as well as the material about money, food, our clothing, our house. Many things the Lord makes promises of, and he blesses us so that we may enjoy and if there are problems, sadness, bitterness, or even an illness, he is there ready and attentive to help us so that we can take on this burden and these difficulties. This is why he said that it was so easy, the yoke and the burden is light, because he made that commitment to help us. Let us as well look at Matthew chapter 13, Matthew 13, in verse 16 and 17 that reads the Lord Jesus Christ but blessed are your eyes for they see after the Lord gives us this recommendation calls upon us all that we all take this yoke and that burden that he as well was carrying that he was going to help us the Lord says Blessed are your eyes, referring to his apostles and as well to the people that were listening. And he says, blessed are your eyes, for they see. 
that see what? What were they were seeing in that moment? In that moment, they were seeing the Lord of glory, the King of kings. They were seeing the Savior, the Messiah. They were seeing there the Lord, whom was working as a human being, the Son of God behaving as a human being, as any other person. And the Lord says, blessed you are because you are seeing me. You see me and your ears, they hear. It says, for surely I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see and they did not see it and to hear what you hear and they did not hear it. So this is true. Because it says that surely he says many prophets. And when we read the Old Testament, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, we read all of these prophets and they all spoke, speak of our Lord Jesus Christ. And they, it says, when they prophesied regarding our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah who would come of that savior, of that king, that perfect king who would bring peace and blessing to the hearts for the people. He would bring happiness for the people. They then desired to know this king. They desired to see him and they could not. They only prophesied. And then later they passed, they died and all was there simply in the promise. In their way of thinking, each one, they thought how that Savior would be, that Messiah that would come in the future. This is why here the Lord says that many prophets desired to see the Lord and to hear him. But the apostles in that moment and the people, you hear me and you see me. This is why it is important that you believe. Hear what I am teaching Believe in me because of you from now on, you will have to go and preach, go and give testimony of me and speak of the kingdom of heaven. And you have to be disciples in all nations. That was the task that the Lord gave them. And we, after more than 2000 years have passed, we continue reading these promises and these beautiful words of our Lord. And we today have been evangelized. We have heard the word of the Lord. We have lived experiences of being in the congregation of God, of hearing his word, of hearing his message, hearing prophecy, and having these marvelous experiences with this true Lord, with the Lord Jesus Christ has given us of his spirit, given us the spiritual gifts, and we are rejoicing today. Today as well, we would say as the prophets, well, the apostles saw the Lord. We today do not see him physically. Either way, we have the Holy Spirit, the gifts. We have how he manifests himself. While he was manifesting himself in the earth, the apostles and the other person saw the Lord, but they didn't understand him or value. They didn't value that the Lord deserved. They didn't honor him. And we today value our Lord and we give him the glory and the honor for we have seen his powerful hand in our lives. So you all, those that listen, you as well shall receive the blessing of the Lord and you will live marvelous experiences with our Lord Jesus Christ. So continue reading the Bible, continue praying and asking of the Lord, read the Psalms for there in the Psalms, there are many prayers, many words to express to God. And there you shall learn to pray to the Lord, to glorify and honor his name. So may my Lord bless you in a great way. Let us pray to our Lord, blessed Lord, all powerful God. You are a great Lord and greatly to be praised, blessed forevermore. We thank you, Lord, for your love, your word, for your mercy, for your promises that are faithful and true, for your word and your mercy and your love upon us all. Holy Lord, we thinking and knowing and believing that you are a God of love, 
that you are a forgiving Father. I ask, O Lord, that you extend your hand of power upon all the persons, every man and woman, child or elderly person that are ill, those who need you, need their health, and they have diverse illnesses as well, evil spirits that torment them, worldly spirits that want to induce them to commit suicide, to take their life, rebuke all of these spirits, persons that are tormented by evil spirits, by demons, persons that hear voices, that see visions of evil spirits that torment them, hear voices that torment them as well. I ask my Lord that you deliver them, that you rebuke these evil spirits, that you rebuke the enemy, rebuke, O Lord, all work of the enemy, all curse from the enemy, and give peace, joy, and happiness to each one, each person. Deliver them, O Lord. Heal them, O Lord. Hear their prayers. Look at their pain, their problem, their difficulty, their sadness. Keep them, protect them. And as well, your powerful hand, blessing economically, materially. Bless them, Lord, that they not lack food, that they not lack the money, that they not lack anything. Guard them, protect them as well, O Lord, because there are conflicts and problems, misunderstandings, arguments, all of these things, O Lord, break all of these chains and shackles, giving them peace, joy, and happiness. Bless each one, Holy Father, cleanse and deliver, O Lord. In the glorious name of Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, we all ask for the glory and honor of your name. In this moment, we are here to worship you. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Christ. We're going to be singing a chorus to our Lord, the title, Victory, Sing It Out, Chorus 163. Chorus 163, Victory, Sing It Out. We're going to sing to our Lord. We are all going to sing to the Lord. Cantar victoria, la palabra del vencedor. Canta victoria, venceremos por fe y amor. Si vienen pruebas y afán, miremos al capitán, quien es el Salvador, en victoria nos guiará. Canta victoria, la palabra del vencedor. Canta victoria, venceremos por fe y amor. Si vienen pruebas y afán, miremos al capitán quien es el Salvador, en victoria nos guiará. Thanks be to our Lord. May my Lord bless you all in a great way. I send you a warm embrace. 